Let, let's talk about other ways you can manipulate these guys. If you had, if these guys get away from you and you know you're going to have to bite the bullet and take a chance on a Malik Smith or take a chance on a Jared Dyson, um, you might want to look at a guy like Jeff McNeil. Because what you, Jeff McNeil doesn't give you anything spectacular. But what he does is he evens out a statistic suck. So what do I mean? In other words, if you get a Malik Smith and he's killing your runs. McNeil had 83. So it kind of helps even that out. 318 average is the big part about McNeil. Everybody's kind of... I don't want to say hating. They're, I, I feel like McNeil, McNeil doesn't get the proper credit that he deserves. I think at 95, that's a pretty good... Pretty accurate ADP for him. The thing I like the most about McNeil, aside from the fact that he's not going to kill you, he, he only had five stolen bases... But it's not zero, right? He plays all over the field. 37 games at second, 31 games at third, 71 in left, and 42 in right. So in essence, he's available third base and corner infielder, second base and middle infielder, and two of the three. He's available in six different spots, and he hits for average, and he gives you decent homers. He's a great supplemental player. Okay? That's my point. You need those guys. You need those guys. I like Reese Hoskins this year. At 105, I feel like he's enough of a value. His average is not great. He hit 226 last year. But I like the 29 homers. I feel like Philly's offense in general is going to be better under Girardi. 86 runs and 85 RBIs both could theoretically go up to that green territory. You could see him over 100. He's not going to steal a base for you. He got two last year. The 228 average is a stickler. Yeah, I mean... Look, here's the thing. He's still young. Hat, he's still young. Listen, we're talking about our third outfielder here. I'm not touting him in the first round. If you're talking about as a third, here's where I'm talking about, okay? So if you went and you got a Marte, and you went and you got a solid second outfielder, You can supplant those Homer and RBI numbers real nicely and complete them to make a nice outfield package with a guy like Reese Hoskins. Now, at 105, yeah, go back to it. Go back. You're absolutely right, Andrea. Go right back to it. I would take Hoskins over Mancini at this point in time. Absolutely. And it's a great point. So, yes, I take him as my third outfielder. I'll stand by that. Because here's the thing. There's a lot of bullshit in this category. I'll tell you who's not bullshit. Kyle Schwarber. I have him at outfielder number 35. His ADP is 138. He's not going to hit leadoff this year. I like Hoskins, Andrea. I I think, again, I'm not putting him as as my front show. But if I can backfill him in the second, third, fourth spot, I'm excited about that. I love Kyle Schwarber. 
Kyle Schwarber is not going to be hitting leadoff this year. His 250 will go up just off of that fact alone. Schwarber had 38 homers last year. He had 82 runs and 92 RBIs in the leadoff spot. 92 RBIs. You gotta love Kyle Schwarber. He continues to get more comfortable in left field. He has a tremendous value here. Franimal, the only thing I don't like about Franimal, he's DH only. He only played three games in right field. But boy, you got to love this kid's power. I think all of his numbers could go north this year. He's going to be needed in Cleveland. 37 homers, 69 runs, 81 RBIs, and a 249 batting average. He couldn't steal a base if he gave it to him. But that's okay. It's a legitimate 40 homer threat. I want to talk about these next guys because this is where you win your lead. This is where you win. These 37 through 48, if you get these guys right, this is where you win your lead. And you'll see a trend with these guys. Versatility and potential. Okay? I'll name them. I'll talk about a few. Danny Santana, Willie Calhoun, Scott Kingery, Kevin Biggio, Byron Buxton, Tommy Edmond, Chris Davis, Andrea, J.D. Davis, Lord Gurriel, David Dahl, Max Kepler, Hunter Dozier, Yasiel Puig. This is what I'm talking about when I tell you you can wait on outfielders. We're on outfielder 37 through 48. You know some dumb shit in your league is going to make a mistake. In draft, I know I put him here. Yasiel Puig, way higher than he should have. Yoannis Cespedes, way higher than he should have. That's where you just nonchalantly swoop in and pick up one of these guys. Who do I want to talk about in particular? Willie Calhoun. I'll get to Buxton Cap. Willie Calhoun, 173 ADP for clarification. I am writing this after he fractured his jaw. He could still hit 30 homers. Like I think Lenny just said this morning. Does not have to have it wired shut. Actually, I think it was Arnie. This is big. That means the recovery time could potentially be quicker. If he misses the first month, 30 homers is still absolutely within his grasp. He has that type of potential. I still... 173 will go down. You can get him realistically probably early 200s now because of the news. I still say bye, Willie Calhoun. Scott Kingery. ADP is 187. He's eligible everywhere. Second base, third base, shortstop, left field, center field. All over the field. Him and Santana are pretty close in ADP. No. Can you hear Okay, I like Kingery. People forget. People forget about his pedigree. I don't know if they forget. They're very similar players. Santana offers a little bit more of homers, but I don't know if that's an anomaly or not. Kingery was a higher touted prospect, right? He's got an everyday place to play. And he's got a backup spot. If Alec Baum comes up, when Alec Baum comes up, 
He can easily be transitioned into the center field spot. Kingery has 30 homer potential. He has 20 stolen base potential. And he's 40 points lower in ADP than Santana is. I really like Scott Kingery this year. I think he's a tremendous value. I want to talk about Buxton Hap. I think it's a great point. 179 is his ADP. How many of y'all out there remember him going in the first round a couple years back? I was the sucker. I'll admit it. And that's okay. We all make mistakes, right? Are you really a sucker in the 16th, 17th round? On a guy that has 40 stolen base potential? And he, mind you, he's still only 26 years old. He was the first overall pick. You have to think that Minnesota is going to say, fuck it, and hit him lead off one of these years. I got to see what we got, right? If he goes and he hits lead off, he steals 40 bases. Again, Hap, at a 179, at 179, I'll take that chance. Listen, here's the premise of this whole show. Stolen bases are greater than home runs. So if stolen bases are greater than home runs, don't you have to bump up Buxton? He hit 263 last year. Not great. What Malik Smith hit? That's the point. He can carry their stolen bases and give you a decent average. You don't need him to be the first round pick. You need him to be what he's shown he can be. 270 to 280. 15 to 20 homers. 30 to 40 stolen. No, he's listen, he's had a couple shitty seasons, Taco. You're absolutely right. I absolutely have owned Buxton. I've been heartbroken many times with him. But again, I really like what Minnesota's cooking up. I've totally been burned by him. But again, you have to no one to hold him, no one to fold him. This kid still has tremendous potential. I'm saying in the 17th round, I'll take that chance. If it fits. If it fits. Andy, your boy. And I know you saw he's on my team. Chris Davis. ADP 170. Talking about 40 homer potential that he's proven. What's not to like about Chris Davis in the middle of the draft? So in that draft, I picked up Jesus Lazardo. I picked up Matt Olson. I picked up Matt Chapman. And I picked up Chris Davis. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Last year, as shitty of a year as he had, he still had 23 homers. I think he hits 40 homers easy this year. Every Bob Melvin, everybody in the camp is talking about how consistent Chris Davis is, how hard of a worker he is, how he's a leader. They expect him to return to form. Is ever Everything from Marcus Simeon to Bob Melvin, anybody you talk to in the athletic system, gushes about Chris Davis. Why is he going in the 18th round? It doesn't make one damn good bit of sense. So, just one final point before I get off of here. 
I, I these last 24 players, I really, it's to provide 